Coming to you from our 54 square foot luxurious suite in the basement of Bob Cajun, The Jim and Terry Show. I'm your host, Terry, and beside me is our special guest here every week to do his talking. You can't tell me I can't stay here. You can't tell uh, me. Gee, I thought we had Jim. It's Alex oh, Jones uh, again. This is America. You can't. Get you can, your hands off me. Get your, get your, get your, get your, this Hi, is, folks. I'm Jim. <laughs> We've wound Jim up. I don't think it was the coffee. There was some pre-existing condition. I'm going to blame COVID-19, maybe a booster. I'm going to blame something. But Alex Jones' is recurring theme. <laughs> I'll try not to do it anymore. <laughs> you do it so easily. It comes trippingly off your tongue. We were talking about Ukraine and Russia and talking about how this will end in our previous podcast. And I suggested that Navalny be released from prison that he be the one negotiating for Russia in terms of settlement of the war with Ukraine. Knowing full well it was Russia who started this, it was needless. The destruction has been on the level of World War II with complete cities like Mariupol annihilated. All the civilian infrastructure plus hospital schools, railway stations, you name it, all destroyed. Wanton killing, mass murders... Mass and torture graves, evidence of torture. I'm thinking Navalny, as the opposition leader, needs to step into the gap when Putin gets out from under his 40 foot table while Zelensky goes to the front to encourage his people in their battles. Yeah, we saw uh, Putin with his last speech to the people. Where is he? He could be anywhere. He could be in a basement in Yugoslavia. We have no idea where the guy's is he could be in russia i don't know if, if, if i was putin i'd be watching my back with everything someone one of the solutions to this war is to kill him and i'm not saying that but i'm just saying one of the solutions is this hitler had his inside men some of them try to kill him putin's a madman he's he's really his back is up against the wall this failed miserably his his military is horribly organized just horribly this is showing you know that Russia isn't the powerhouse they were without using nukes and different things like that or the or very very powerful missiles uh, Which would include the war the world in in the destruction which they would cause so uh, We don't know you know there we got the president of Ukraine going right to the front when he's got as you said uh, he's got a, a, a Everybody in, 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 in who wants money He's a target because they want to take him out. And then we, we've got Putin in this white room, wherever that is, doing his speech. And we've got a population in Russia fleeing Russia. Did you ever think you would see the day? No. no. I never thought it, it I'd see it. It does look like a war-torn Europe yeah. where the people are – in World War II, you saw ox carts. You saw uh, cars being pulled by – cows and yeah, yeah. oxen to get out of the war zones because it was the destruction of everything and that's what Russia has brought and people are fearing that and the fear is from Russians at the beginning of the war the fear was Ukrainian so they yeah. migrated I forget tens of millions of Ukrainians fled at the beginning of the war why do you think the fleeing because I was just thinking about it do you think the Russians are fleeing because Putin had indicated in his speech that the West had threatened nuclear war? And the West didn't, by the way, folks, but he said they did. Do you think the Russian people are fleeing the country because their fear of nuclear holocaust, uh, nuclear uh, destruction in their land? Or do you think they're fleeing because they finally realize our leader is nuts? A little bit of this and a little bit Maybe of that. Maybe both, eh? Yeah, just choose a little bit. Um, Putin is nuts, and I think people are beginning to realize that. I think also that those fleeing are trying to avoid the conscription, and so they might be people yes. who are likely to be impacted by that law that they're now bringing in. They tried the prisons, and they couldn't get enough volunteers. <laughs> well, it's a death sentence. It really is. I mean, Putin doesn't talk about not caring about life. No. He just threw people at this. It reminds me way back the Iraq-Iran war when Iran was losing. They just sent kids out. Kids with sticks. But that's, Run that way. That's been done in World War II. The, as, Has it? As the uh, Allies 
took over and moved into Germany in the last push of the last few weeks of the war, they found old men and kids manning How the sad. weapons. It is. Yeah. It is sad. So that's... Um, that's looking not too good, and uh, I'm not sure how it will end or when. I think it will go on longer than we think. We talked about Ukraine repurposing all the captured equipment from the Russians who were leaving the stuff intact. I mean, the stuff they got was intact. The Russians have fled. So the question is, if people even serving in the Russian military are fleeing, the civilians are fleeing. How long can Putin keep control of his regime? I'm not sure. Well, and the sad thing is about all this fleeing, nobody is ever, ever wanting to go into Russia and take Russia. No, the line, the line yeah. is not to go into Russia. Yeah, nobody wants to go into there. And nobody wanted the Russian land. This was all made up by Putin yeah. and his generals, I guess. So that's the strangest thing of all. This war was one-sided, as Biden said. One person, one man, declared war on another free nation to take that nation over. And that nation happens to have friends in the free world. And the free world's helping them defend their land. And uh, it's, as, it's as simple as that, man. I don't know how people can say Russia, you know, the, the land belongs to Russia. It does not. Yeah. And the whole notion that really is abhorrent to me is annihilating the people, the language, the culture, the traditions, and denying the existence of Ukraine. That's called hate. Oh. That's a little ultimate more than, hate. A little more than hate. It's almost on the, on the scale of a genocide. It is it, a genocide. If he could get away with it, he would. And there is where the U.S. and Europe has aligned themselves with Ukraine. Okay, so some prophecies coming from a guy who's not claiming to really know. We're going to see a nuclear exchange. No, we're not. We're going to see Trump flee the nation. His mm. nation, the United States. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay, there's two. <laughs> there's, the, there's the question. Jim's poking to see where, where the limits are. And you'll are. see military in the streets. No. Okay, there you there go. You go. Three, three for three. three. Tic tac no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, where are we going with all this? I did hear one interesting former military general, somebody I hadn't heard before, suggest that if Putin has, well, they say that the 300,000 conscripts for this war has now escalated. That's an act of escalation. And this person is saying, perhaps it's time to put contractors on the ground. What Western? exactly does he mean by that? Like missionaries? <laughs> missionaries? No, no. You know, you know the ones, what I'm trying to say. Come on, help me here. Um, yes. You're missionaries? How do you say it then? Merc mercenaries. Mercenaries. Thank yes. you. Okay. Big difference. Yeah, I know huge difference. One throws Bibles at people and the other I, throws I, grenades. I know there's a difference. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, contractors. So, what does that mean? He never specifies. So, I'm exploring what is a contractor in this context of a armed conflict? And it could be anything from we're going to build outhouses near the front for to service the troops. We're going to build uh, food services, canteens. We're going to build hospitals, field hospitals near the front. We're going to provide electrical services. We're going to provide drone surveillance. We're going to provide infrastructure. We're going to build or, all the barges and bridges to get or Ukraine. Or we're going to finance a private army to go in and take out the 300,000 that are approaching the border. Interesting. Okay, the, you've heard that on the Jim and Terry show. That's Jim's speculation. I just thought it was interesting. This is the first time we're not saying boots on the ground yet. Yeah. But I'm wondering if that that will well, happen. Well, if there was some sort of private weird little army that somehow happened to get top of the notch American military stuff. You're talking about Bruce Willis or... And somehow or, they managed to... <laughs> Take out the three hundred thousand. Sylvester Stallone. Where before they got to the border. Yeah, I'm not. Or maybe he meant contract the death of Putin. Well, take you, Putin out. You know, we had Blackwater, that name of private contracting services during the Afghan campaign of the United States. 
that's a, like a private army. And that's where Eric Prince, who's the brother of the former uh, Trump appointee to the education, Secretary of Education, and that's that Amway family. Oh, the uh, uh, DeVos? DeVos. Oh. And Eric Prince is a brother of uh, Betsy DeVos. Oh. So, yeah, look for that. Some twists on the front line. Where will it all go? Peacefully, I hope. Not an escalation. No nukes. Let's see. Jim and Terry Show. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>